that time again where I answer your questions that you leave me on Tumblr that I never get around to answering actually on Tumblr, so instead I answer them on YouTube for no apparent reason. Hey, what would you do if you had a friend that is a better friend to you than you are to them? They overwhelm me when I express a need for space, they don't listen. There's nothing wrong with them, we just don't mesh well, what should I do? If you are unhappy in a friendship, and again, I've made videos about this, it is not your responsibility nor obligation to keep that person in your life. You don't need a clear-cut reason, and you also don't need to make a big deal out of it. Just either A, be an adult and very clear and explain to them, you know, I don't want to be friends because of X, Y, or Z. If that's too difficult for you or the situation is a little bit more complex than that, then just stop talking to them as much. It may hurt them, it may hurt you, but in the end you're going to be happier and they're going to be happier because they don't want to be friends with someone who doesn't want to be friends with them, just like you don't want to be friends with someone who you don't want to be friends with. So allow yourself to have that space. Just don't make a big deal out of it, don't blow it out of proportion. Do what's going to make you happy and trust that everything will work itself out in the end. Hi, I have a weird problem and I don't really know what to do. The problem is that I'm afraid of so many things. I can't accept how unpredictable life is. I'm scared that something bad happens when I'm in a big shopping center, on the street, or on a train or bus. The more I read what's going on in the world, the more afraid I am. How can I learn to accept the fact that I can't control people and everything else around me? Right when I first read this, it sounds to me like you may have a larger issue going on. I don't know the exact names of it or, you know, the exact issue that is at stand here, but I think that there are slight disorders, or that sounds too serious, but I think that there are slight things wrong that therapy or something can really help you with overcoming. So if this is like an irrational fear of life, then I really, really recommend that you talk to a medical professional because that is not something that I can help you with because I don't know anything about it. If it's not on a medical level and you're positive that it's not on a medical level and you've checked that it's not on a medical level, then my advice to you would just be accept that, you know, life is unpredictable. And I know that's so simple and, and it's way easier said than done because if you could just do that on, on a snap, then you would already have done it. But really, I think it's a whole part of just the spiritual path of learning to accept the ups and downs of life and realizing that I could walk out my front door and die right now, I could get hit by a car on my way to work, um, I could live until the day that I'm 85 years old, but I don't have any control in that. You don't want to spend your entire life stuck thinking that you are not going to be able to do anything because something might happen to you first. Don't be a victim of circumstance. Make the life that you want happen, and if you die somewhere along the way, or you die long after it's over, it just will happen. I think death is a subject that, according to religion and according to different life circumstances and the way you were raised, everyone will have a different perspective on it, but my perspective is that you can't let the fear of it keep you from living your life. But again, if this is deeper than that, you really, really need to see a therapist. Not in a bad way, just you need to figure this out now. I am in love, but not in a romantic way, with a guy who is 10 years older than me. I thrive off of his energy and I can't stop thinking about the amazing conversations we had and the feeling I had when I was with him. He was complimenting me and supporting me and it seemed genuine. He was my mentor in a school club. But as this club has ended, he started to ignore me. I can't stop thinking about what made him dislike me. I think that he probably views you as a student figure and he probably assumes that you view him as a mentor slash teacher figure. I don't know the specifics of the situation. I don't know what exactly you felt. I don't know the emotions that you had. I don't know the actual age difference between you two. But what I do know is that regardless of the fact that he was a mentor and regardless of the age difference, if someone, anyone in your life, if you want to pursue something with them and they seem uninterested, you don't want that lack of communication in your life anyways. Even if he was your age, and even if he lived in your town, and even if everything circumstantial was perfect, but he pretended like you didn't exist, why do you want that in your life? I know that there's a lot of varying viewpoints and a lot of specific situations concerning this topic, and that a lot of people will say, you have to fight for the person that you love, and, and you have to work toward it, but my personal opinion, based off of zero relationships in my life and based off of actual zero circumstantial evidence, is that if you are meant to be in a relationship and you and another person are meant to be together in a romantic, loving way, then they will like you, you will like them, there will be no big issues and everything will be fine. And I just believe that if it's meant to be, you will come together and from what you're telling me, it does not sound like this is meant to be. I just personally believe, you know, after growing up being a hopeless romantic and loving those romantic comedies and all those kinds of things, that love is not nearly as complicated as it is painted in Hollywood. I think love is just very simple when it happens. And I think it's very clear 
and obvious and you have to find someone at the right place in their life and at the right place in your life. And sometimes it'll hurt and sometimes it'll be, you know, a really gratifying experience. But at the end of the day, do not get hung up on somebody because of what you imagined your relationship would be like. Because it didn't happen and you need to stay open for other opportunities to come into your life. I just saw this on Tumblr, what do you think? White people love the word wanderlust because of the desire to travel and explore the world or some shit, but we all know that's code word for loving colonialism. So because I'm not a perfect human being and because I don't know everything about the world, I just googled what colonialism means, and it is the policy or practice of acquiring full or partial political control over another country, occupying it with settlers, and exploiting it economically. Um, without any real research, I'm gonna have to say that I disagree with that statement simply because tourism and traveling is actually really beneficial to a country's economy. But there are a lot of statistics that, you know, tourism like in Los Angeles or London or Singapore is actually a huge part of that country's economy and without it, they might suffer a lot. I'm not gonna say that colonialism is good because colonialism to me is a much bigger problem that exists on a very political level, but I don't think wanderlust is political. I think Wanderlust, or the idea of wanderlust, in my opinion, is just people going out and wanting to immerse themselves in another country's or city's culture. It's not always perfect, people might not always be respectful in other countries, and some people might just want to travel for the pictures or just to say that they did it. But for me, wanderlust is the whole idea of just putting yourself in a different position than you've ever been before, and experiencing another way of living, and just giving yourself that opportunity to become more knowledgeable, more cultured, more knowing, and kind of building up your spirit from there. I don't have enough information to form an educated opinion, so I'm going to leave it there. But if you have enough information to form an educated opinion, or you've done research on this, or you want to do research on it, let me know in the comments below um, so that the person who sent this can read it, and so that I can read it too, because I think this is a really interesting topic, but I'm not going to speak about something that I know nothing about. It's not my right. I have a friend who's depressed, and I know she has thought about suicide many times. I really don't know what to do to help her because I'm a very happy and positive person, so I would never understand why she'd want to do such horrible things to herself. What should I do? Just like I said about the wanderlust thing, it's not your responsibility to understand every single point of view and every single circumstance that someone can have in their lives, but it is your responsibility to be respectful and honor what someone else has to go through that you don't. So the first thing to know would just be that most of the time depression is psychological, genetic, and you can't help it. She's not doing it for attention, she's not doing it to try to get people to feel bad for her, she's doing it because she can't help but feel that desolate, lonely feeling. The most you can do is be there for her. If she wants to speak to you, give her the opportunity to do so. If she ever does reach out to you, don't make her feel like she's bothering you. Don't make her feel like her opinions and what she's saying is unwanted. Just make it a very open, loving environment for her. Text her a few times a week, just out of nowhere for no apparent reason, and just say, hey, what's up? Wanna hang out? Wanna go do something? And try to get her out of the house, try to get her speaking, and just introduce her to happier parts of life. You can share with her, you know, positive YouTubers or Tumblrs or Instagrams that inspire you to try to surround her with positive light. If it reaches another level and you're concerned that her life may be at risk, then you should definitely contact a parent, another friend, a medical professional. I know it's scary and I know that the person who is experiencing the depression will not like it, but if you are genuinely concerned that that is a possibility, it is, it's your responsibility to do something about it. What you have to understand is that when you're depressed or you have an eating disorder or anything, it's so hard to remove yourself from the situation and look at it objectively. It's hard to look in and say, oh, I am being destructive, I am being horrible to myself, this is irrational. Because you're so stuck in the mindset that you're worthless and that no one likes you and you're so paranoid about all of these things that it's not even comprehensible that you know you could be doing something wrong. It just seems so right to loathe yourself and to hate what you're doing with your life. There are definitely websites that you can visit, and I'll try to put some in the description below, about dealing with friends who are depressed, and I think that you should definitely educate yourself with that, or any of you, if you're dealing with this situation too. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope that you enjoyed this advice, kind of chilled out sort of video. My goal is to start doing these every single Tuesday, like an advice Tuesday or Tumblr Tuesday sort of setup, so 
kind of getting on that schedule now. Thanks for watching. I really, really appreciate it. I hope that your question was answered, and if it's not, then hopefully I'll get to it next week. If you want to leave me questions for next week's video, feel free to go to my Tumblr. I'll link it down below. You can go leave me a question. And most of all, just explore my other videos. You can subscribe if you want, give the video a like, leave a comment with your opinions and experiences down below, and we can support and love one another and get through this journey together. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next video.